Hi, this is Corella, Corella Ficklin dot com at Corella Ficklin dot com. Excuse me, and um, you it's Corella Ficklin dot com. Welcome Network dot com. Welcome dot com, and don't forget Welcome is spelled W Y L C O M E, and you can either go to Welcome dot com or Welcome Network dot com. Explain A S K P L A I N dot com. I study guides dot com. I study cards dot com. And if you want to pick up any of my writings, look at any of my writings, download any of them, any of the books that I've written, written, you can also go to Pedians, P E D I A N S dot com. Uh, I've given, qu I've done quite a few videos on pronunciation. And pronunciation is important, especially if you haven't learned how to pronounce. But there's quite a few people who have been studying English forever. And I know what that feels like, you know, when you've been studying something forever, but you still do not feel as if you really understand the language. You'll go to the movies, you'll read a book, you'll listen to some music, and you still don't get a lot, or you still don't understand, excuse me, a lot of what is being said. Did you ever think that maybe your problem was, or your problem is, that what you speak and what you understand, because you haven't had the opportunity to live in the country where the language is spoken, so what you see, what you um, understand and what you speak is standard English. English that's spoken no matter where you go and you understand it. But here's the problem and think about your own language. When you're in an academic setting, when you're in a formal setting, your language is much more f formal, much more standard. But you, when you're in a relaxed setting, when you're in a, a setting that's much more casual, how standard is the language you speak? Your language, when you're in a much more casual or informal situation, becomes much less casual. You use expressions that you would not use in a formal situation. Now, I'm not talking about vulgarities. I'm not talking about speaking uh, a language that's totally inappropriate. I'm talking about speaking a casual form of your language. It's still appropriate, but maybe it wouldn't be appropriate in certain academic or much more formal environments or um, places, situations, I should say, situations. So what we have available, it's called idiomatic synonyms and slang synonyms. That is, for example, We'll give you, now we have cards, these are study cards. Um, we call them iStudy cards, but they're like flashcards. We created these flashcards. You have the standard word, okay? So on the first line you have a card, right? On the first line you have the standard word. On the second line you have expressions that are normally used in much more casual situation that mean generally speaking the same thing as a standard word you have on the first line. Most times you have three synonyms. Most times. On the last line, so you have standard word, synonym, 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 and on the last line you have a sentence as an example, let me give you an example. We have the word, now once again, when I'm looking over here, not over here because I'm looking at you, when I'm looking over here, okay, when I'm looking over here, what I'm looking at is, I have another computer here, so I'm looking at the, um, the card that you can download. So th this is taken directly from what you can get. So let me give you an example. Now the card is called Idiomatic Synonyms. So you have the word to work. So if you study English, you know the word to work. Number one is a regular verb. No? 
and it's regular in all tenses. So it's I, you, we, they work, he, she, it works. Past tense worked. Uh, past participle worked. Okay. But sometimes when you want to say in a more casual situation or more casual conversation to work, you might use another word. And let's, let me give you the three examples that I have here in the cards. To work. Now, the idiomatic synonym could be to burn the midnight oil. To burn the midnight oil. To do double duty. To plug away. Now, that's to work, but it's to work very hard. Or like we say, to work like a slave. Okay? Or to work like there's no tomorrow. All right? Those are other expressions that mean the same thing. But it's not just to work, but it's to work very, very hard. 24-7. Okay, 24 hours, 7 days a week. Alright. So, the first word, the standard word that everybody probably knows who's ever studied English to work. Second line is this uh, um, exp expression. That means the same thing, but much more casual. To burn the midnight oil, to do double duty, to plug away. And then the sentence, I've been burning the midnight oil for too long. That means I've been working too long, right? I'm about to drop. To be, when you say I'm about to drop, uh, or I'm about to, uh, um, um, uh, to fall out. No, you wouldn't say to fall out. But I'm about to drop, which means I'm so tired that I feel like I can just fall to the floor. That's what it means, to collapse. But you're not about to drop. That means you're dead tired. That means you're very, very tired. Okay. So what I'm going to do is give you the standard word and then give you the idiomatic slang um, uh, expressions. This is not slang. This is not slang. This is, um, these are expressions, but it's not slang. Slang is something very different. For example, to deny. To deny someone something. Okay. So you don't approve of something. So, to turn thumbs down. Here's to turn thumbs down. This is to turn thumbs down. This is not, this is not uh, vulgar and it's not slang. You just go, somebody says, no. No. Okay? To say no or to turn a deaf ear. Deaf ear, that means an ear that doesn't hear. It's an expression. So, to deny something to someone is... To turn thumbs down, to say no, no, or to turn a deaf ear. Now, you know, actually turn the ear. It just means that you just ignore what the person is saying because you, the answer is no. Okay. And, I, and the next, sentence, the next um, line is a sentence that gives you. To castigate. Now, to castigate is a very... Um, that's a, that's a more high level um, word. And you'll find that words that are, have Latin or Greek roots, because that's to castigate in Spanish is castigar, uh, you'll find that um, those words are a higher level word. So that's, that's standard, but not quite. To dress down, to blast, to take to task, or to chide. Okay, all right. Another one would be to rake over the coals. All right, and mm, let me give you another one because time is running out. To reprimand. Now, to, to reprimand and to chastise and to chide basically means they all mean the same thing. That you are telling someone, you're talking to someone badly because they have done something. To chew out, to scold, to trim down, to ball out. Now, ball is spelled B-A-W-L, not B-A-L-L. -L. Time is running out. Let me give you one more. You can always go on to uh, I Study Guides. Exhausted. If you're exhausted, you're dead. Ready to drop. Worn out. Done in. So... Come on to I Study Cards. Come to CorallaFickland.com. You can download as many cards as you like. So, um, 
This is idiomatic synonyms.